What is going on, my bueno people, and thank you so much for coming back to the Runaway Podcast. Now, this is the first time we're going to be here on YouTube, and I'm hoping we can be here for a while, even though we're going through that whole FTA thing, FTC, FTC? I think it's FTC. So today, what we're going to talk about is Mandalorian, seasons two and three, not seasons, episodes, wow, episodes two and three, and then we're going to be talking about the Rise of Skywalker. So let's get into it. Um, episode two of the Mandalorian. I'm telling you guys... It was a character-driven episode, and there are some people who are upset by it, and that's okay. You have every right to be upset by it, especially if you want a plot. However, I think this show isn't going to be plot-driven. I think the plot is in the characters. And that's why there are no, you know, there there is no backstory that we need to see. It's more of we're going along with this journey with the Mandalorian, and right now our plot is to make sure that Baby Yoda is safe. And that's pretty much it, and that's what you get in this episode is that he's with the Baby Yoda trying to go back to his ship. The Jawas infiltrate his ship, they scrap it, and then he has to get it back. He goes to his new friend, Cool, Kiel, Quill, however you want to say his name, I'm sure how you say it. Um, Nick Nolte's character, he goes back there, he helps him. Uh, they have to go get this egg for the Jawas, and it's this rhino-looking creature. We kind of saw one a little bit in uh, Attack of the Clones. I do apologize, I don't know the name of that creature. But anyways, um, he's trying to get it, and it's got him down for the count. He's really trying to fight, and Baby Yoda saves him by lifting the creature up using the Force. Mando acts like he's never seen it before. Um, it's very strange. Anyway, so he ends up taking, and that's, that's the end of the first, the second episode. And he offers Nick Nolte's character uh, a chance to be a part of his crew, and he declines, and they move on. So then we go back to the planet he goes back to the client gives the baby off and then the client pays him his bounty which is basically metal for his armor um specific metal um but can't golly you're terrible you don't remember anything do you i don't it is what it is guys but anyways so he takes the armor to the, uh, I say the Mandalorian blacksmith, and she makes him a brand new, brand new armor. Brand, there's enough there to make him a whole new body plate, chest plate, everything. And so then he goes to get more bounties, and Grief, uh, who's played by Carl Weathers, tells him, no, you know, go take a break. He says, come on, there's gonna be one. There is one. He ends up taking it, and then he asks about the baby. Uh, he says, it's against the code. And then he's about to leave, and really his paternal instincts kick in. He wants to go get the baby. So he becomes Batman for this episode. And I swear up and down, the Mandalorian is Batman. He is Bruce Wayne under that helmet. Probably not. But <laughs> um, he's the Star Wars equivalent to Batman in this episode. Like It, just, it looks amazing. It, it looks fantastic. So with that being said... He goes, he fights, gets the baby, and they leave. And it's very cute, and it makes you wonder where they're headed next. Is he gonna go do his bounty? And on top of that, the Mandos come and back him up. It, it's, it's this really cool showdown. It is a good episode. I'm not gonna go deep into it, but episodes two and three are pushing the Mando story along, and that's where the plot's at. It's in the Mando's character and trying to protect Baby Yoda. Some people don't like that, but that's what the plot is right now. And we don't know, we don't know this is a brand new character. We don't know what the story's supposed to be. So let's just sit back and relax and enjoy, enjoy it. As for The Rise of Skywalker, when I recorded this originally, there was no new news. This morning I woke up and there was a new trailer and there was a new clip for the movie. And the trailer was beautiful. I thought it was, it was, it was fantastic. The clip, I enjoyed. I laughed. I had a good time with it. Basically, they're running uh, from the First Order, and all of a sudden, the First Order has these weird sand bikes. They've got two troopers on them, and then they launch in the air, and these two of these troopers have jetpacks, and 3 is like, oh no, they can fly! And Finn's like, yeah, they can fly! And then Paul's like, they can fly! And I thought it was funny. I thought it was, it's the humor we've been getting from the sequel trilogy. A lot of people have hated on it because of the comedy or the fact of Finn and 3PO and, and Poe are like, they can fly? 
we have to keep in mind, unless someone can prove me wrong, we have to keep in mind, first order stormtroopers, they haven't flown. There's nowhere in their guard where there are jet troopers. You have to keep in mind, this is 30 years, 35 years, right? It's, it's like 35 years after the original trilogy. There were jet troopers around then. Not in the movies, but they were in canon. We had jet clone troopers. But we haven't had jet first order troopers. At least, if someone could tell me... If someone could tell me that there are first order uh, jet troopers, then I'd be like, okay, you're right. But at this point, we've not seen any. I don't think even in canon at all, anywhere, there's been a jet trooper. So, for a First Order Stormtrooper, <clears throat> it's a new thing. For the Resistance, it's a new thing. So for people to be like, oh, they've been again, look at so many dollars talking about. Yes, they do. They do, because we've not seen them. And again, if you can tell me somewhere else, if it's in, if it's in Battlefront 2, and there are First Order uh, Jet Troopers, then I'm wrong. But I have not seen them yet. <sighs> that being said, <laughs> so there was that. Um, I enjoyed it. A lot of people didn't, which is sad because it's the humor we've gotten before. So I don't know. I don't know why it's that big of a deal. If someone could like tell me and show me, then I'd understand. But I, I don't right now. I don't understand. And I've kind of jumped. I jumped on Jeremy Geeks and Gamers, and I jumped at Mike Zero. Mike Zero used to be really positive. He's not anymore. He's jumping on that train of oh, I'm gonna make money if I'm negative about it. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers jumps on anything he can to bring on this film. And it's it's kind of sad. It's anything to make a check. And it's it's really, really disheartening to see that and to hear that because what's the point? Why can't you just enjoy the film? Like I understand there's issues with canon, there's issues with this and that, but how come you can't just enjoy what's there? It looks cool. The, it's comedy. We've seen the comedy before. There's comedy in the original trilogy. There's comedy in the, in the prequels. Worst comedy at that in the prequels. As much as I love the prequels, it's worst comedy. And I've heard people say, oh, it's, it's that Avengers comedy. It's that Marvel comedy. Well, if there's in, that's the comedy that's here now. That's the cinematic comedy. And if you can show me something else, would you rather it be Marvel comedy or would you rather it be, like, crude humor comedy? That's my question. Like, I would rather, for Star Wars, I'd rather go the Marvel comedy than the crude humor. But that's just me. That's really just me. So, I don't know. It, it really bothered me. There's not a whole lot I want to talk about on this podcast, uh, this episode. But, I'm excited for The Rise of Skywalker. I'm nervous. Not because of the film itself or JJ or whatever's going on. It's more the fans. It's more of those negative Nancys who are going to make people kind of stray away. Now, the box office figures are different. Pre-sales are different. Those are showing good numbers. It's, I don't know, it's hard. It's really hard to sit and defend it. Whoops. It's really hard to sit and defend it because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And it's, it's hard to sit there and I don't know how people can complain about it whenever we don't know what's going to happen. You know, Josh over at uh, the Denim Nerds just did a video about how JJ might have just confirmed the leaks. All he did was talk about how there was an actor who left their script in, under their bed and a cleaner got it and tried to sell it on eBay. The studio bought it back. Who knows how true that is? Who knows how true that is? Knowing JJ, it's a misdirect. Because I don't think it happened. That's why he didn't name the actor. Because the actor doesn't exist. That story doesn't exist. I'm telling you. Right now, JJ screws with people. I read an article today saying that it wasn't done. That the movie wasn't done yet. Then I read another article saying that it was finished. JJ screws with people. In the story. So... We are less than a month away from this movie. I'm very excited for it. Uh, this is the week of the holiday, so happy Thanksgiving, everybody. You guys have an awesome day, okay? May the force be with you. Bye.